All right, hey, how's it going? Mr. Johnston here. We're going to show you how to solve a truss uh, like you would use in POE uh, using a conceptual method that I call the T-chart method. And so the first thing uh, we've already kind of solved for our angles, I've kind of set that aside, and now we're going to solve for the reaction forces. We're going to start out by summing our moments, uh, and then we're going to sum our forces in the Y and in the X. And remember all of those things, um, have to equal zero. So let's get started here. The, the very first thing I want to do when I look at this truss that I've got set up here is I've got about three unknowns. Um, and so that helps me figure out where I want to start. Uh, I only have one unknown over here and two over here. So if I set this as my pivot point, then the sum of the moments here, because moment is force times distance, um, if that number, if the distance to that pivot point is a zero, then I know my moment is zero. So that's why I can I can do that and solve for this guy over here because in this case these two become known. They're both zero, and so we just kind of we kind of assume that we don't necessarily write it down, but that's how that math, what I call math magic, works. So let's start out here. Uh, the first thing I want to remember is that when we're summing moments, we're talking about uh, counterclockwise or clockwise. So I'm going to start with a T chart and I'm going to say counterclockwise and then I'm going to say clockwise. And remembering that clockwise is typically negative and this is positive. We don't really think about it in terms of negative positive because I think it makes the math a little easier. Um, but just so you know, if you're following along at home, moment remember is force times a distance. So I'm going to start here and I like to work right to left and I'm going to look at this first force. The force at D is what I'm going to call that. And it's a thousand. OK, and it's going down. So it's going clockwise. So I can come here and I'm going to write one thousand. And I know that distance is three feet. So if I continue this line of action, it's only three feet over there to that. So my moment there is three thousand. OK, keep working my way that way. I've got one at. 250 and that force at B and I look at that distance and that's five feet back to my pivot point. And so that gives me 1250. Okay. Keep working my way across. I have 500. That line of action is seven feet. So I have 500 times seven. That should give me 3,500. Okay. Now I come over to the thing that's unknown. I know it's going up, which means it has to be going counterclockwise. The force of that moment, I don't know. So let's call that X times the distance that I do know. Okay. What do I know? The sum of the moments has to equal zero. So if I sum all these moments up, so I'm going to do that real quick. So 3,000 plus 1250 plus 3,500 gives me 7,750. I know that this moment, which is X times 10, has to equal 7750. So what I can do is I can bring this guy down and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put an equal sign here and I'm gonna say X times 10 equals 775. Divide both sides by 10 and I get 775 for that reaction force at C in the Y direction. Now, looking back at my deal, I've got a couple more unknowns. Let's start with the ones that are going up and down. Remember, what goes up must come down. If you like blood, sweat, and tears. All right, so I'm going to make my T-chart, and I'm going to say up, down, positive, negative. So I'm going to start here. 775 is going up. I'm going to write it right here. Okay, come over 500. It's going down. Next, 250, going down. Next, 1,000, it's going down. Come over, and I have RFAY. It's going up, okay? So I know, remember, I'm, I think about this as a teeter-totter. There's my fulcrum. This thing has to balance out with a positive and a negative value. So if I sum all these forces on this side, I get 1750. Well, I know that this side has to equal 1750. So 775 plus RFAY has to equal this. 
So if I just take my 1750 minus 775, I'm going to get 975. So if I added those up, I'm good. So now I know this one's 975. The last thing I got to do is sum my forces in the X. Got to equal zero. Well, I go, what goes left has to come right. Well, I've got this guy here. And let's say it's going right. Well, it's the only thing. Reaction force at X is the only thing going right. Well, what's it got to equal? It's got to equal zero. There you go. And that's how you do that.